This is the One Up Dropper Post V2, which has been a staple in the mountain bike community for years due to its simplicity, adjustability, no frills performance, and super short insertion length, allowing riders to maximize their drop for the most butt clearance possible. But this is the brand new One Up Dropper Post V3, which retains the heart and soul of the V2, but it gains some new refinements and upgrades to take an already awesome product and make it even better. It's more simple, more durable, a little bit shorter, quite a bit lighter, and even gets a bump in performance. In this video, we're gonna talk about all these new revisions and features of the One Up Dropper V3, install it on my bike, and see how it feels. Let's check it out. The one-up dropper post V2 changed the game in the budget dropper post world. Most other affordable posts at the time didn't actually work that well, and the V2 dropper made everyone else step up their game. While they didn't leave all that much room for improvement with the V2, one-up has stepped up their own game and squeezed a little more juice out of the lemon with their V3 dropper post, improving on just about every aspect of the V2 dropper. This thing is lighter, smaller, more reliable, and easier to service, making our shop favorite dropper post even better. And now instead of completely reinventing the dropper post, the V3 is really just a detailed refinement in just about every way over the V2. It feels more like a new product than just a pure revision. And there have been a lot of changes which have added up to create a much more premium package that a lot of riders are really gonna like. First, let's look at what hasn't changed between the V2 and the V3 dropper post. They got a lot of things right with the previous post, so not everything has to be brand new. One Up is offering the V3 dropper in all the same sizes as the V2 to fit all modern mountain bikes. That includes 27.2, 30.9, 31.6, and 34.9 diameters, and lengths all the way from 90 millimeters all the way up to 240 mil. And just like the V2, you can reduce the maximum travel of the V3 by 20 millimeters in 10 millimeter increments. This requires no tools, and all you have to do is insert the included reducers in the right spot. So for example, if you're in between a 210 and a 180, you can buy the longer 210 post and reduce the travel down to 200 or 190 if needed. So whether you're looking to install a dropper with maximum drop on something like your kid's new 24 inch mountain bike, all the way up to your triple XL enduro rig, there is a one-up dropper V3 for you. All right, so home mechanics have always been fans of one-up products because they prioritize serviceability and always have a great stock of rebuild kits and spare parts for basically all their products. That's exactly the case with the V3 dropper and opening this thing up is insanely easy. You only need three super basic tools, a 14 millimeter wrench, a five millimeter hex and a two millimeter hex, and that's it. You can have this thing fully disassembled in less than a minute and back together with fresh grease in no time. And while it is way easier to service this thing, you won't actually have to do it as often because the service interval for cleaning and greasing the inside of the post has gone up from 75 hours for the V2 up to 120 hours for the V3. Now this is thanks to the new SKF main seal at the top of the post here to keep more dirt on the outside and more grease on the inside. The longer 180, 210, and 240 millimeter posts also have an additional internal bushing to keep the post from developing play if you plan on using the V3 until the V4 comes out, which is my current plan. Or if you've got the V2 post and you're not really sure if you want to upgrade to the new V3, you can also now upgrade your V2 post. 1UP is offering a V2.1 collar with the SKF seal, tie bolt kits to bring the weight down, and they're promising to make replacement parts for the V2 for at least another five years. 1UP's new year resolution was losing weight, and they've slimmed down this V3 by 60 to 70 grams compared to the V2, depending on the size, and is now the lightest dropper for its amount of drop on the market. That's about 15% lighter than the V2, which is a substantial weight savings off of a dropper post. Plus, if you're really watching those grams, 1UP also offers a titanium bolt kit to take another 10 grams off this thing. Not only that, but it's also a bit shorter than the V2, with an overall 10 mil shorter length and three mil shorter stack to squeeze as much drop as possible out of your bike. They're also reclaiming the title of the shortest dropper stack height after the Wolf Tooth Resolve Post launched with one millimeter shorter stack than the V2. All of this means that your one up V3 can give you the absolute maximum amount of seat post travel as long as your bike uses internal dropper routing. Also brand new for the V3 is this recyclable sealed aluminum cartridge that you won't ever have to top off because it's completely sealed with a nitrogen charge, saving you some time in the workshop. This new cartridge is rated to last at least 350 hours up from about 250 hours for the V2 cartridge. 1UP also heard the call for a smoother and easier to use dropper post and with a redesigned actuator combined with the new SKF seals and internal IGUS bushings, it takes 75% less thumb force to actuate the post with your weight on the saddle. So you can finally stop doing those uh, thumb curls in the gym tour. Fatality. They've also doubled up on the anti-rotation pins to reduce the rotational play in the post. 
Personally, we've never really cared about a little bit of play in the droppers, but a lot of riders do. So it's really cool to see one up listening to what other riders are requesting. All right, well, that's enough talking about this thing. Let's actually install the V3 dropper on my bike to see how it feels compared to my current V2. Let's go. Whoa, dude. <laughs> First, before installing the V3 in my bike, swapping out the V2, Tor, you and I are going to test a couple things. We're gonna feel the side-to-side -side play and the forward and back, fore aft play um, in both the extended, middle, and lower position. And we're also gonna see how the dropper post feels to Get it to drop with the lever pushed in and with your butt on the saddle and kind of just pushing it by hand. So we're going to see if that actuation is smoother and requires as little breakaway force as they said. Yeah. So Okay, cool. Well, yeah, let's just look at the uh, the fore and aft play first. This is the V2 in the fully up position. Really no fore aft play at all. And now for side to side play, there is a little bit. It is super hard to notice, but there is a little bit going on there. And then if we go ahead and lower it to halfway, then there's quite a bit more side to side play. Not like end of the world type stuff, but totally. it's, but it it's like there if you're, yeah, yeah, if you're picky, um, I could see someone, you know, seeing that. Yep, and then there is a little bit of four aft play, really not that much, and then all the way down. There's definitely the most play in the fully down position, but again, like nothing that's gonna like ruin your bike ride, but it is something that is there, and if you're super picky, that might be a bummer, so. Um, what else? What was next on the list, Mike? The next is breakaway force. So now you're going to push that lever down and just cycle it with your hand, see how much breakaway force it takes to get it down, and then also just do it with your butt and seat too, like totally. your ride. Totally. So this is the V2 dropper post, breakaway force, not too bad. There's definitely like a little bit of force I have to give it for it to overcome that friction, but I don't know. Yeah. It's not too bad, it's pretty reasonable. There's you posts know? out there that have yeah. more breakaway force and less. Totally. Um, so it's pretty run of the mill. I'm going to try it with my butt here. Careful. Easy. Easy. Yeah. A little bit more weight behind it for sure. Totally. So, yeah, so, uh, yeah it, this is something that's never really been uh, a factor that I've wished was improved upon. Totally. So it'll be interesting to see once we get this V3 in here yeah. to see how this feels. All right, last but not least, I'm kind of a sucker for a good top out sound so I know when my dropper post is all the way up. And so we're going to have Tor lean down with his microphone and get a little audio sample what it sounds at top out. All right. I don't There's know. some dropper post ASMR for you. That's how it sounds. <laughs> Let's take this post out and we're gonna do a little visual comparison with the V2 and the V3 on the bench. And we're gonna take it apart real quick because we have our toolkit here of three tools and see how quickly we can take this thing apart. And then we're gonna install it and do all those little checks again, see how the V3 feels. So let's go. How many hands does it take to take a dropper post out? Yeah, can we get four, five more mechanics over here, please? <laughs> Alex. All right. One up dropper V2, out of there. Sweet. I'm gonna take swap a seat the off. That's the swap worst, this. dude. Ugh. Okay. All right. V2 is out of the bike, and just some quick visual differences. Uh, they look pretty similar, to be honest, as to be expected from the same product from the same brand with some revisions. Got some cutouts here on the top of the seat guts, and so that's definitely where some of the weight savings come from. And then obviously, pretty noticeable is the different uh, finishes. We've got a matte and a contrasting gloss. Finish on it, big old 180 etch in the side, looks pretty cool. Um, other than that, looks pretty much the same, uh, which is good, because the V2 rules. O'Doyle rules. O'Doyle, I got a feeling your whole family's going down. All right, let's get our scale turned on, and this is the V3 we're throwing on the scale here. This is 594 grams. Let's check out the V2. This is? 669, so that's, Oh God, math on the spot here. Yeah, like 70 over, grams. Over 70 grams. Yeah, don't totally. So yeah, definitely is. It's hard to tell in your hand for sure, but the scale don't lie. Before installing the V3, I wanted to check to see how fast and easy it is to take it apart. Without looking at any documentation and just winging it, I managed to take the post apart in one minute and 16 seconds and only needed a 14 millimeter wrench and a two millimeter Allen key to disassemble the post enough to do a full sleeve service. If I were to do this again, it would probably take about 30 seconds, which is incredibly easy compared to every other dropper post in the market. The biggest time saver that I saw here is that the V3's seal head threads onto the outside of the post body compared to the V2, which has threads on the inside of the post body, meaning you don't need a strap wrench to loosen the seal head anymore, and you can just loosen it up by hand. All right, just about back together. That was uh, ridiculously easy. I had literally no idea what I was doing, and it took me slightly over a minute. So let's pop this in the bike, see how it feels. I love key and feel, it's so funny. You ever see the one where he puts marbles in his mouth? <laughs> Six neutron meters, in memory of Jimmy. <laughs> neutron? 
<laughs> okay. Uh, what? Rest in peace. <laughs> He's dead? Jimmy Neutron's dead? God. We lost Jimmy. <laughs> God. No. You know, people talk about cold plunges. That's bullshit. <laughs> you gotta wake up every morning and watch Jimmy Neutron. It's my Jimmy Neutron plunge. Yeah. All right, the V3 is in the bike, and we gotta be honest, we filmed this next little part like five times. It's really hard to explain how it feels different or better. I just gotta say, like literally everything about the V3 just feels a little bit better than the V2. It's a revised dropper that's been around for a couple years. The engineers got to spend more time and hear some customer requests, and they kind of answered that. Everything just feels a little bit better in the wiggle test and in the actuation of the post, just feels more fluid. The top out sound is a little bit more loud, a little bit more pronounced, and uh, everything's just been improved upon a little bit. Yeah, it's just a lot of marginal gains. For me, the biggest uh, performance difference of the post uh, is when you're sitting on the bike and you've got all your weight on the post and you go ahead and you hit that lever, there's not that moment of hesitation where you have to like angle your weight forward to be more aligned at the C-tube angle. You can just be straight down, hit the post, and it's instant. There's a lot less friction there. I think that's because of that extra bushing that's on the 180, 210, and 240 posts that fights against the binding. And so the post is way more willing to just get out of the way when you're sitting on it. You don't have to be consciously, okay, I'm gonna use my dropper pose right. You can just turn your brain off and sit on this thing and it's gonna disappear off my deal. Yeah, so increased bushings and bushing overlap, um, the SKF seals, the new cartridge, it just all works together to feel really fluid. It just kind of falls out from underneath you. It's just a little bit more natural feeling and uh, a little bit less thinking involved to just get it to move out of its way. It just feels more advanced and more premium than the V2. All right, for the wiggle test, just across the board in all three positions, there's just less wiggle, you know? It is still apparent, um, but it's pretty much a non-issue for Mike, myself, and pretty much everyone I ride with. Um, and as far as the top out, let's go ahead and give that a listen. Yeah, another solid sounding top out. Well done, engineers at 1UP. It's another, you know, another great post. All right, so uh, after getting a little bit of super quick testing on the V3, do you think it's worth it for someone to upgrade from their current V2 to this brand new V3? Probably not. If you have a V2 and it works good, it's not giving you any issues, you know, just keep that thing lubed up. It's gonna keep making you happy on the trail. And you can upgrade with that V2 0.1 SKF seal head kit and maybe in those high bolts, which are pretty cheap, save a little bit of weight and just kind of update your V2 if you want. But if you're building a new bike, or upgrading from something else that's not working that great, then obviously the V3 is the only one that's out and you're gonna be really happy with it. So uh, it feels really good, feels a little bit more premium. Now do note that it took a bump in performance, but also got a bump in price. So now it's $269.99. So it's kind of fallen out of purely that budget category, kind of blurring the lines between budget and premium. And I think that for what you get for 269 bucks, um, it feels very at home at that price. So I think that they price it very well. Yeah, there's definitely not any droppers that are cheaper than this that are better than this on the market. So it still offers great value as far as dropper posts go. And honestly, when this thing first, you know, came across the desk here, we thought, oh man, like this is kind of just similar to the V2. But after playing with it in the shop here, it's, there's a lot of small changes that add up to a big upgrade on the bike between the lighter weight, the smoother actuation, and just an overall more premium package that it's something that we're actually really stoked about. It feels more like a new product than just a pure revision. So yeah. that's pretty cool. So, but again, if you got a V2, yeah, keep on running it. Yep. But if you are looking for an awesome dropper for not a ton of money, um, but you also don't want to skimp out on performance and feel and sound, then the V3 is going to make you pretty happy. So, yep. all right, there you have it. That's the brand new one-up dropper V3. The V2 was our favorite dropper for a long time. I think the V3 is going to make a lot of people happy. We've got these things in stock. Our website, thelostco.com. Free shipping over 49 bucks. We've also got one-up dropper levers, lots of other dropper levers, and everything to get your seat going up and down. Yeah, well, thanks for watching the video, guys. Uh, hit the like and subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.